fellow travelers. So I'm doing a little bit of a test on a portable battery generator um, that we received or that we bought uh, along with 400 watts of solar. So the way I currently have this set up and what we actually have is the Anchor Solix F3800. It's right here. Um, I'll have some footage in here also of not of it not in there in the bay and set out. But some of the footage you're going to see here is just of a different test I, I did with air conditioning on, one AC on, two ACs on, running the coffee maker, how it charged with um, just the solar, how it's charging uh, with AC power. So just some different scenarios that are kind of every day. So hope you enjoy and here we go. All right, everyone, in this first clip, I'm running one AC to start with while only bringing in anywhere from 162 to 182 watts of solar from the 400 watt deployable panel. The AC output for this is consistently around 1,260 watts of power. Uh, you will notice the immediate jump um, to 2,117 watts once the compressor kicked on for the AC unit. You also notice the remaining uses at the top, at the top covers around two hours to two and a half hours. Um, pretty steady with a pull of power while it's at 77% of battery. The app on this is pretty simple to use, um, pr pretty clean. There's not a whole lot of things that really kind of get in the way. It's showing you your DC input, your AC output, and then of course um, you've got the other options as far as showing if you're using a car port or anything like that. So it's pretty consistent at the top here as far as remaining usage while it's 77% being around two hours and 18 minutes of usage time left while only bringing in 184 watts with run, running one full AC. Um, so this was a pretty simple test and I'm gonna go to the next one right now. Okay, so on this next test, you're gonna see we're starting with one AC running fully, bringing in 187 watts from the solar panel and it's gonna jump to 2,264 watts when I turn on this second AC right now. So now we've got two ACs running, bringing in 187 watts DC input, AC output, jumped to the 2,264 and then went down just a little, uh, just under 2,200 while that second AC cycles, um, while they're both running. Now you're going to see here in just a moment, the a second AC only runs for a few moments. That's the one in our bedroom. It's going to drop off or it's going to cycle off. And when it does that, you're going to notice the AC output drop down here to 1400 watts roughly. Um, and at the top, you'll also notice the remaining battery usage drops to around an hour with both ACs on. So it definitely can run two ACs, um, but the battery, the amount of time you'd be able to do that is pretty limited. So, Okay, everyone. So on this next test, I have one AC on while making a cup of coffee with the Keurig. The AC output jumps from around 1,400 uh, watts to 2,709 watts for that initial pull of power. This is just while it is pouring the cup of coffee. Um, then you'll notice the AC output drops down to, I think, around 1,386. Um, interesting here, though, is as the coffee maker runs the heat cycle, once it drops back down, it does shoot it back up to 2,685, which it really only lasts for really just under a minute. And then... Um, it levels back off while that's running and warming that water. It drops back down to around 1,359 watts. I am pretty impressed with how the app itself keeps up with the changes there at the top with showing how much usage time is remaining. All of these tests up to this point um, 
and it's only really reduced the power by about 7% from where I started at 77%, uh, where you're now seeing we are at 70%. Um, so that heat cycle is still running. It's going to drop, and that'll take care of this test. So there it is dropping right there, back down. Pretty consistent when it gets down to running just the one AC with the amount of watts we've got pulling in from the DC input. So I'm now going to go on to the next test here. Okay, so on this test, I am only running the fan on one of the AC units. Now, at this point, we're bringing in 208 watts of power from the solar while only using about 260 watts. Then I turn the fan to AC and it kicks up to around 1100 watts. Um, you'll notice here in just a second. Now what was interesting to me about this was it jumped to, let's see, yeah, they'll run it right around 1100. Uh, what was interesting about this to me was you know, when I started the test and was running the AC unit, the AC pool was around 1,260 watts pretty consistently. And you'll notice while it's running here, it's just right around 1,100 watts. So not sure what the difference is there. I don't have any other lights on or anything. The only thing that's really pulling any power is the AC unit running. Um, Again, the app is keeping up pretty well with the changes as they're happening. At the top there, you can see uh, remaining usage at an hour and 43 minutes, which was pretty consistent with where we were at before. So now I'm going to go in and actually turn off the AC unit. Okay, it is off. Come back. And now you're going to notice it kind of fluctuate at the top where it's trying to regulate and keep up. We're at 49% power at this point. And then once you'll see it drop here, gets us down, I think around, I don't know, I think back down around 40. Yeah, it says around 40 watts and then it jumped up to like 500. So it was trying to fluctuate a little bit while I had nothing running at all. Uh, it was trying to figure out, and you'll even notice it at the top, it did the same thing. Um, and then it levels off, saying it would take about just under 11 hours to fully charge while we're at 49%. But you notice it's fluctuating and it bounces from like a, a day um, to then back down to around 11 hours. So it was pretty interesting that it took it a few moments for it to actually catch up. That's the first time it really kind of fluctuated and didn't keep up as I was immediately making the changes in real time. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move to the next test. And I'll... Okay, so now at this point, I wanted to see how long it would take to charge with no AC output uh, with bringing in around 200 watts of solar power. Um, and you see here at this point, it would actually take to get it fully charged just over 11 hours. That's running connected to the 400 watt solar panel, only bringing in what you see around 194 watts and not using any energy at all. I'm just I don't have it plugged up at all. So this is just to charge it. So it's not too bad, um, but at the same time, still 11 hours is 11 hours. Okay, so last test, I promise. I plugged it up to the AC outlet, uh, so we'd have AC input. Wanted to see how long it would take. We immediately started getting a consistent 1,768 watts at its highest point, and it would charge the unit from 50% up to fully charged just at about an hour and 18 minutes. Not too bad. Good afternoon, fellow travelers. All right, so I'm going to introduce you here to the Anchor Solix F3800 power station. It is a solar generator. Um, 
basically runs at 6,000 watts of power. It has equivalent to, uh, I think, like two lithium batteries in there with an inverter. So this thing right here can power our entire 50 amp rig with running the two ACs as you've seen in the test that I ran. Uh, this unit that we got here actually came with this 400 watt deployable solar panel, which you saw there at the beginning when I was starting the test. But um, the unit weighs uh, just around 132 pounds, uh, has this button here for your power, shows them at 100%. Um, that's for the display. Here's your power button. Comes with a car port right there. On this side, you've got your AC power where you plug it up. You've got two ports to hook up for your uh, solar panel cords. This up here, if I can actually get it. Well, anyway, this is the actual um, plug for your home power because you can actually run this to well i cover the camera there sorry um you can run this to hook up at your home to be a backup power source and then down here you can actually connect other battery units to run in parallel with this to give you extended power and then on this side you've got your 50 amp and 30 amp that'll run well, actually, you do your 50 amp down, and then regular, um, your regular, uh, like 220, I think it is, or 120. My brain's not working right now. Here's all your 120s, 50 amp, 220s. And then, of course, uh, this has your overcharge protection on when you're charging. You push this button to turn this side on. Um, also, in the front, you've got your USB-Cs. you got three of those and two standard USBs. So... It's pretty cool. It has this um, easy tow handle, is what it says here. You just push the button, pull it up, and then it has wheels. You can roll it around. The other thing, too, is it has rubber stoppers here that kind of line up with the tires on the bottom when you do lay it down. Because what I actually do is I put it in the bay here, and on the bottom there's a fold out handle so it doesn't get in the way. And then when I have it in here, and I want to hook it up so I don't have to have it outside, I can run, I have a 10 foot extension 50 amp that connects to my regular 50 amp. So I can run that straight into here from the back of the rig and have it in here actually run. It doesn't get too hot or anything in here for the unit itself. So I'm able to have it to where we've got a power source, a generator essentially that just like you'd have your onboard lithium batteries um, that allows us to be able to be off grid for an extended period of time. Now, with that said, this is gonna be in addition to our standard generator, which we have the Champion 4,500 watt with the inverter, a 3,500 watt inverter, genera uh, only gas generator, as well as we're going to have uh, solar install done at the NRVTA with Big Beer Battery uh, we're going to have four 300 watt big beer battery batteries installed uh, along with 1200 watts of solar on the roof so we will be fully off-grid capable uh, we are now especially with this in the generator our gas generator but that'll all allow us to um, have everything we need to be fully off-grid for as long as we want to and have multiple power sources to top off our onboard lithium batteries that we'll have installed here in literally a month from today. So just wanted to give you a brief introduction to this bad boy. Um, pretty heavy, but at the same time, totally worth it um, as far as being able to, you know, kind of be off the grid and camp that way. That's the way we, we really like to do it. We uh, spent some earlier this year out there in the west and we're going to spend more time coming this spring um, out west and it's going to be all off grid so more to come with the install here in about a month at the nrvta and we will go from there thank you all for watching